Good morning, Kitchissippi. It is Saturday, August the 25th. This is a video version of the 105th Kitchissippi Ward newsletter. I'll be posting that newsletter tomorrow. It will have a lot more details about the issues that we're covering. Uh, if you're not subscribed, do so today at kitchissippiward.ca. Really busy newsletter as I come off holidays. Let's jump right in. The first item is an open house to take a look at a new proposal for a development at 1946 Scott Street. Surface Developments is proposing to put a 12-story building at that location. It is basically at the corner of West Village Private, Lanark and Scott Street. The open house is going to be held uh, on uh, sorry, August the 30th from 6 until 7.30 p.m. at the Van Lang Fieldhouse. I hope you'll come by and take a look. Also in the newsletter, there is going to be an open house to take a look at the new site plan that has been proposed for 175 Carruthers. 175 Carruthers is the second phase of the development that has already converted the school at 12 Sterling into condos. They have council approval, but are coming forward with a site plan that makes a number of modifications that result in a much bulkier biz, uh, building. I have concerns, residents have concerns. I hope you'll join us for the open house, which is going Going to be held on September the 13th at the La Roche, La Roche Park Fieldhouse from 6.30 until 8.30 p.m. Also in the newsletter, um, I have just published details of the site plan that has been proposed for 1960 Scott Street. That is the trailhead site. They recently received approval from council against the op uh, opposition of myself and several other councillors at the trailhead site. They received approval for a 19-story building, but are now proposing within the same height limit, the physical height limit, to put more stories and units. I've just had an opportunity to put those details online. I'll have more details in the coming weeks. Also in the newsletter, uh, next week I'm going to be visiting the uh, representatives of the Royal Thai government. Uh, the Royal Thai government is asking the city to approve office use for their property that is at 180 Island Park Drive. It is currently zoned residential. The Royal Thai government has asked for permission to use it as office space. I have a number of concerns. Residents have a number of concerns. The details are in the email newsletter and I will be meeting soon with representatives of the Royal Thai government to discuss that op application. Also in the newsletter this week, as always, it is very busy at the Committee of Adjustment. Uh, the committee is going to meet on September the 6th. Uh, it will take a look at a property at 652 Tweedsmuir, where the owner is seeking to demolish the existing building and construct a two-story semi-detached dwelling. They're seeking consent to subdivide the property. At 481 Briarwood, the owner is seeking to demolish the existing property. They're asking for some variances in order to build a two-story uh, detached dwelling. Those variances are associated with uh, reduced lot area and width, reduced side yard setback, an increase in building height, and reduced front yard setback. I'll have a chance to take a closer look at that one when I get back in the office on Monday. And at 219 Royal, the owner is seeking to de uh, demolish the existing dwelling, subdivide the property into two separate parcels with variances sought for reduced lot width and lot area. Uh, from the August 16th decision uh, uh, hearing, we do have uh, the decisions <laughs> in. Essentially, almost everything was approved. The 385 Dominion application, which with, uh, which with I was heavily involved uh, through my vacation, uh, has been adjourned until that meeting uh, of September the 6th. The application for 223-225 Royal was approved, as was an application at 155 Buell. 548 Kirkwood. At 269 Carruthers, uh, the uh, application was dialed back not to ask for approval for any particular building type. They had asked for a, uh, a long semi, a front to back semi, uh, but they have now simply sought permission and received it in order to subdivide the lot. Uh, the application for 101 and 103 Armstrong uh, that sought a reapproval of a 2014 approval that had lapsed was also approved. 
Also in the newsletter this week, there is a link. The city is surveying residents on uh, whether or not to change the hours allowed for parking on street when there is no sign from three hours to six hours. This popped up during my holidays. I haven't had a chance to take a look at the rationale for that. There is a survey online. Normally, if you don't see parking signs indicating how long you're allowed to park on the street, it means by default it's three hours. They're now looking at making that default six hours. I'm looking forward to seeing what that feedback is. I don't have any particular strong feelings one way or the other. Also in the newsletter, uh, there is a, a group of Elmdale Public School stakeholders who are asking for residents' help to uh, get pressure on this Board of Education, uh, pressure on the provincial government to get a renewal of that school moving ahead. There is a renewal planned, but with uncertain budget and timing right now, parents are seeking to accelerate that. I hope you'll have a chance to visit their new webpage and to sign their petition. I do have uh, upcoming pop-up office hours. Those resume now that summer is over, although you wouldn't know it from this glorious Westboro Fuse weekend. My next pop-up hours are going to be on August the 29th from 9 a.m. until 12 p.m. I'll be at Stella Luna. That's at 1130 Wellington Street West. Come on by. It's a drop-in format. Chat with me about anything Kitchissippi or city that is on your mind. The folks behind Big Trees of Kitchissippi, which is an advocacy group seeking to preserve our urban tree forest canopy here in town has a new website. I hope you'll take a look. The link is in the newsletter, uh, but it is bigtreeskitch.wixsite.com slash trees. Uh, I know that uh, they are very active in the uh, community. They put a lot of pressure on me to do what we can at the city to try to preserve our forest canopy, particularly here in the urban area. I do hope you'll have a chance to visit that website. Also in the newsletter this week, a quick overview of how the new 30 kilometer per hour limit came to pass on Princeton Avenue. Uh, there is a new 30 kilometer per hour speed limit on Princeton from Churchill until Denbury. I have a description of how that happened, how more can happen in the ward. Hope you'll take a look. Uh, of course, Westboro Fuse is on. Today is Saturday. Uh, the street is uh, really hopping. Lots of activities for the whole family in the street. That continues tomorrow. I hope you'll have a chance to pop on by. The McKellar Park Fall Festival is now fast approaching. That is going to be on September the 24th. That is the Sunday from 10.30 until 2.30. As far as I know, they are still seeking volunteers. Really important if you have an opportunity to help out to do so. I know they make volunteering really easy. Uh, get in touch using the links in the newsletter with the McKellar Park Community Association to help volunteer. Interesting news, the Wellington West Business Improvement Area is looking for a new executive director. Their existing director, uh, Zach Daler, had his last day uh, a week or so ago. He has been an amazing partner in building this community. My thanks go to Zach. There is a link in the newsletter with a job description. Uh, a really exciting opportunity for the right candidate. I hope a number of you will take a look at that and consider making an application. Another job uh, posting that has uh, uh, come to my attention, the Ottawa West Community Support Centre in um, Wellington Village serves the, uh, the West End of Ottawa with services to help seniors age in place, is looking for a part-time casual driver. There's more links, uh, more information about that in the newsletter. Also wanted to highlight um, the uh, Ottawa Jewish Archives is holding a vernissage, taking a look at a new photography exhibit called Face-to-Face uh, -to -face vis a vis That vernissage is going to be held on Wednesday, September the 6th from 6 until 7 p.m. at uh, the uh, JCC 21 Nadolny Sachs Private. The 24th Scouting Group that uh, serves our community with uh, scouts and cubs is uh, seeking new volunteers. There's opportunities to work behind the scenes as, as well as uh, directly with the kids. More information in the newsletter. I am uh, starting to advertise now uh, something with which I'm sure I'll be heavily involved. The Transportation Equity Summit that is being held by the Healthy Transportation Coalition as well as Enviro Center is going to be held at City Hall on September the 22nd. Link in the newsletter to how you can participate in that. I am looking forward to a really broad range of discussion there. Should be interesting for decision makers, residents, communities, everybody to talk about how transportation in the city can be made more equitable.
at City Hall this week, a light agenda. We just had planning committee and council. It was relatively quiet. Um, I think I was the only one to bring a, a substantive motion, help a small ISP get permission to operate on our streets. Um, the uh, meeting uh, next week is going to be uh, the uh, Community and Protective Services meeting. There are a few interesting things in there I'd encourage people to take a look at. There are links in the newsletter to the report. There um, is a change being proposed to the property standards bylaw with respect to the definition of graffiti. Also some changes that are important to help broaden the applicability of our light pollution bylaw broader than just the immediately uh, neighboring uh, residences and properties. And there is a response from uh, counts or to Councillor McKenney from staff with respect to the noise bylaw and infill construction. Link to the uh, various reports there on the Community and Protective Services agenda. Link is in the newsletter. In the office, I do want to say thank you very much to Julie de la uh, She has now left the office as our summer intern. Very productive summer. She did a lot of work uh, on some special projects for me, taking care of casework, and uh, she did a bit of door knocking with me while I was on holidays. Tons of fun. Best of work, Julie, uh, as you continue your studies at the University of Beijing. Uh, the volume of work in our office continues to climb and climb and climb. It is becoming unsustainable. I am uh, really pleased to uh, have a new full-time staff member joining us in just a couple of weeks. Looking forward to the opportunity to introduce her to, her to you, uh, uh, I think, uh, over the, uh, the next newsletter. There are a whole whack of new planning files coming across our desk. Uh, we have been making some great progress finding a compromise on 979 uh, Wellington Street. Um, and of course, uh, the various construction projects, Helena, Broadhead, uh, and Iona, as well as the uh, Kirkwood Iona, uh, the Kirkwood resurfacing have been generating a lot of work for our office. I think those are starting to calm down as we've worked through a number of uh, issues with our neighbors, but I know that the various construction projects in the ward are going to continue to keep us busy for a few weeks. Uh, happy Pride weekend, uh, Kitchissippi. It is absolutely glorious weather. Uh, do take a chance to uh, get outside, enjoy the various festivals that are ongoing in the ward and uh, I will see you next week. Thanks for watching.